Hey y'all, welcome. In this video, I just wanna go over the different parts of Xcode and what the actual names are for different areas because the Xcode window can be quite intimidating, especially when you're reading tutorials and you're not quite familiar enough with Xcode to figure out exactly what they mean. Um, so like I said, in this video, we're just gonna go over those official names and areas and stuff and talk about some nifty tools and, and things inside Xcode itself. So just a warning, this is coming out right before WWDC, which means there may be a couple changes happening um, that just haven't made it into the video. If there are changes to interfaces, I'll be like a real YouTuber and link it up in one of these corners. I'm not sure which one yet because I'm still not a real YouTuber. Um, I'll make sure to link it up and do a whole new video that talks about the different parts and you know all the exciting changes that'll happen in Xcode after this. Um, so here we go, let's talk about Xcode. So after you start up Xcode, you do get the wonderful window here that says welcome to Xcode. The official name for this is welcome to Xcode. It is quite a descriptive name here. We're gonna create a brand new Swift UI app here. And um, we're gonna, I put create in quotes because it's gonna be very simple and it's just gonna say hello world because that's all we need it to do. So go ahead and click the plus button to create a new Xcode and let's talk about these things here that pop up. So when you create a new project, you always have some templates that you can build from. By default, it's gonna open up to this multi-platform app. You also have iOS, macOS, watchOS, all these fun things. Um, we'll just stick with the multi-platform app here. Hit next, you give it a name. Um, you can say whether or not to use core data. Um, when you do multi-platform, you might notice there's no options here. That's because it's already by default a Swift UI and a Swift app. So we hit next. And then you can place it where you want it to go. I'm gonna go place it on this wonderful handy dandy thing here in my edit. And we'll make a new folder. Create an intro to Xcode. Great, and we'll create the whole Hello World project. So now we have this Hello World project. Just to give you a quick rundown of how things are. So on the left side, left hand side here, so just like above and below me, you have the navigation view. The navigation view is going to allow you to navigate to different projects, project files. So you can see here, there's a Hello World app. We can just quickly grab and go into different parts of the app here. On top of that, you can get to different parts and you can actually hover over and there's gonna be some cool tool tips that come in here, the source control navigator. So if you were working in Git, that kind of deal, the symbol, different symbols inside your apps, different classes, properties, methods, that kind of fun stuff. You can also search. You can see here, I searched at one point. We're gonna go ahead and close that. Build time errors. Um, if you're running tests, that kind of deal. Then at the bottom, you also have different, You this is all part of the navigation view itself where you can add a new file, add a new group, all those kind of deals. So this plus button allows you to add new files um, or you could always just right click and get those options here as well. I'm covering up some of those options, but it's the same new file, new group, that kind of deal. Now on the opposite side here, so above and below where I am now, where it says no selection, that is going to be your inspector view. So when you have objects actually selected in Xcode, it's going to give you options here. So if I go ahead and turn on my canvas, my preview for my Swift UI app, you can see that there's a bunch of different options here. So you can control different prop. Well, you can't see because I'm in the way. So now going that way over on the far, far part of the screen there, opposite of me, you can actually see all these different options that you have for whatever you have selected. So whatever you have selected, the inspector is gonna give you properties and objects that you can actually work with for that. Um, because this is a Swift UI view, Swift UI objects, you can have all the modifiers and all the properties in here that you can adjust as well, which is pretty nice. Um, you can also just quickly, the little paper icon that allows you to change your identity, uh, so it's kind of like the file inspector. We can start seeing what they all are, histories, quick helps, all that fun stuff. So like if I click on content view here, we can actually see some of the quick help for the content view. Now in the middle here, we haven't really talked about this. That's where we're gonna transition to. The middle here, that is your editor view. So your, your editor area really. 
this is going to be where you probably spend a most, if not all of your time, because this editor view is where you write code. This is where your code actually lives and where you start adjusting. So I can change this instead of hello world. I can say hello YouTube and we can see it here. So again, you edit your code in the editor area. That's going to be from here down. This is your editor area. Now I have the canvas open over here. Of course, if you're not running a Swift UI app, you won't have the canvas open. If you want to close your canvas area, you can always hit show editor only. So this little, these little buttons here, show editor only, and that's only going to show you your editor. You can bring it back if you want to all that fun stuff. So now that you know the editor area, what's above the editor? Cause I said it was really just this line down and that's your editor area. Well, this up here is called the toolbar. Your toolbar is going to be where you can go and, adjust, and either adjust what you're viewing in the main window. Again, the main window is everything here, or it's going to actually um, start your app. So the this button here and this button here, it hides and it shows different parts of the main window. So if I hit this button, hide or show the, show the inspector, it's actually gonna say goodbye to that inspector view. And then you can tap it again to come back. Same with this button over here, except it's the navigation view. Again, goodbye navigation view. Welcome back. Missed you. Um, then you have the plus button here. And what this plus button is going to do, we're going to go that way, is it's going to open up the library. And these are different things that you can add into your code, into the editor area, basically. So now if I really wanted to add a button, I can just click on the plus, hit the button, drop it down. And it didn't give me an error necessarily because it just added those two together. So now what we could do here is hit the plus if I wanted to push them together into a V stack so they hold up. We can go and find one. Here's a vertical stack. Drop it in. Again, it just keeps making different iPhones so that you can view content differently because the content's not actually in this V stack. Now we can copy. Based. Boom. And we're all in one B stack now, all from using that library. Now this is all the canvas. If you don't want to run it inside the canvas, that's when you can scroll down over here and you see this hello world and this part here. So this is actually your status bar. It tells you how your app's currently doing. Is it running? Was the build successful? Is there a failure? Once you start getting errors, you'll start seeing like red stop signs, that kind of deal in there. Then to the left is actually your simulation simulator option. So you can do iPhone 12 Pro Max and that'll change what the simulator is. So when I hit the play button to actually start the simulation, you can see that it's gonna pop up here and we have the simulator going. Hello YouTube and there's a button. It doesn't do anything, but there's a button here. Now I'm gonna hop back into Xcode. You use that play button to run and now to stop the simulator, you hit the stop button. Like, so now it's not running the app anymore in that simulator. What you might notice is that this bar appears at the bottom when you hit the run button. Well, that bar, if you click this little button right here to the left, is your debug area. So you open up that debug area. This debug area is gonna tell you if you have breakpoints set up, if you're printing anything in the console. So like if we wanted to say, great, we want to print, hello YT. Um, next. So now when we run the simulator and we hit the button, make sure the debug area is open and we hit the button, I promise you I'm hitting the button. You can start seeing hello YT in this debug area. So you have the console here so that you can print when you need to, to the console, which is super handy, especially when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your app so you can debug it. It's the debug area name. So now you have these menus. So we're gonna go over the menu bar options. File is going to allow you to do file type options like open files, create new files, stuff like that. Edit allows you to copy, paste, things like that. Um, views, you get to start changing what views you actually have open. Do you need navigators? Do you need your debug area, inspectors, all that kind of stuff. So basically views just allow you to customize this main window. Find, you can, it allows you to find anything inside the project basically. How you navigate, editor, different editor options here. 
if there's issues, you can see what these issues are. Um, now, if you need to build, run, archive, all that kind of stuff is under the product here. Then you have debug, which is going to be what allows you to access breakpoints, stuff like that. Source control, if you have Git hooked into this repo, you can see Git options here. Same with window. Um, windows just allow you to change what windows, where they go, stuff like that. So that toolbar at the top is very important. I go up to it a lot, um, especially to handle source control, that kind of stuff. I'm a very big fan of Git and keeping things in source control as long as possible. So that's it for my intro to Xcode. This is going over specifically Xcode version V12.5. You can get it from the Mac App Store. That's the best place. Auto updates, all that is handled then. I highly recommend um, just playing around with it, figuring out what all the buttons do. I am also putting in the description box below, I am putting a link to the actual Apple documentation that walks you through more of Xcode. I, like I said, this was just a quick walkthrough of what it looks like when you make a brand new app. Um, not gonna put that up on GitHub, but thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, all the things. That'd be really great to help me out. And that's it. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Thank you.